Week nine of the NFL season kicks off Thursday night in Indy with the Jets taking on the Colts. The Jets came into last week's game as a double digit underdog at home against the Bengals who were in first place in the AFC. The Jets were expected to get blown out because they had quarterback Mike White making his first career start for the injured Zach Wilson. But it was White who outdueled Joe Burrow and led the Jets to a stunning victory down the stretch. I just got one freaking game ball. 405 yards passing, three times. Yeah. Hey, enjoy this one, boys. Yeah. Enjoy this one. As for the Colts, it's shaping up as a what might have been kind of season as they continue to give away leads and lose close games, most recently to their AFC South rivals, the Tennessee Titans. We know where we're at. Fortunately, a loss like this, we got a quick turnaround. It's now or never for the Colts if they have any plans on reaching the playoffs. Will they turn it around tonight at home or will Mike White turn in another surprising performance in Indy? Week nine is about to get underway. All right, welcome to the HQ alongside Akeem Dermish. I'm Jim Basco. Akeem, week nine already here. The season just buzzing along. So the Colts, they suffer a devastating loss after giving up a two-touchdown lead. But the Titans, who won that game, also lose running back Derrick Henry. So heading into Thursday's kickoff with the Jets, how might that help the Colts' chances? No Henry for a shot at the division. Let's explore two-thirds of the Pick 6 podcast. Will Brinson and Ryan Wilson. And gentlemen, as it stands now, 6-2 and two, the Titans are still three games up. Up on the Colts having beaten them twice. AFC South seems like a long shot. So let's look at perhaps the playoffs. Do either of you see them making the postseason? And that's the more realistic claim for a second season shot. Ryan, start with you. It's going to be some heavy lifting, Jim. So as we sit here, they're currently 12th in the AFC. They're 3-5. and five. The 14th ahead of them, who are still on the outside of the playoff bubble looking in, are 4-4. Four and four. So they'll need to leapfrog those teams. And when you look at the, the playoff odds from our buddies at Football Outsiders, it's about 31% that the Titans make the playoffs. Uh, as you might imagine, the, the excuse me, the Colts, as you might imagine, the Titans pretty much have the AFC South locked up. Yes, they've lost Derrick Henry. Yes, they replaced it with, with Adrian Peterson. I don't know if it matters much inside the division. So for the Colts, they got to win the games they need to win. They need to get to probably nine wins to have a chance to get that seventh seed. It'll be, it won't be easy. Uh, you can look at the schedule and, and sort of see there are some wins on there, starting with the Jets this week. But after that, there could be some difficult games as well. They have to play the Bills. They have to play Tampa Bay. They also have to play the Cardinals. So when you play the Jets, you have to win that game. You have two more games for the Jaguars. You need to win those games and hope that Carson Wentz, uh, Will Brinson's favorite player, by the way, can continue to play at a high level because they're going to give up that first-round pick otherwise. Yeah, I mean, you got to – at some point, if you're the Colts, you have to sort of take – take stock of, of where you stand in terms of the standings and, and where you stand in terms of the draft. Because if you're Indianapolis, there's a chance you give away a top five or top 10 pick. If you lose games and Carson Wentz plays more than 70, 75% of the snaps or 70% of the snaps and the Colts go to the playoffs. I look at the schedule and I think, man, I mean, you know, you got, you got games against, you got a game against the Texans. You got a game against the Jaguars, two games against the Jaguars, excuse me. And, you know, Raiders team that certainly has seen some, uh, you know, issues uh, in, in the last several weeks. It's a say the least. Uh, obviously, this Jets game is enormous. They're 10 and a half point favorites. They should win this game at home. I expect them to win the game, but the Jets have been frisky, and if, if they don't take care of business against the Jets, it's probably good night on the playoff bid. When you look at the AFC in particular, I think if the Colts were in the NFC, I would probably like them to make the playoffs as that weird seventh seed where the Panthers currently occupy somehow. But in the AFC, there are so many quality teams that are right there in the playoff hunt, whether it's the Patriots or the Chiefs. Name, name any one of those several teams, and you have to think it's going to be a tough road to hoe for the Indianapolis Colts to make the postseason. Yeah, the Jets have been frisky. Jets backup quarterback and former practice squad player Mike White has already made the Pro Football Hall of Fame. The jersey he wore in last week's epic comeback against the Bengals on display in Canton, Ohio. Mike White, the first quarterback in NFL history with 400 passing yards, three passing touchdowns in his first career start. And his 37 completions are the most by a quarterback in his first start. White leading the Jets to a double-digit comeback with less than five minutes to go. Now, the Jets' backup is getting his primetime close-up on Thursday night. Ryan, what are your expectations for Mike White following his historic first NFL start? 
Well, well, Akeem, the law of averages would suggest that he'll probably throw five interceptions and, and right. throw for 150 yards. But I was curious, so I, I looked it up with the pro football reference and, and took a sneak peek here. Here's some guys, some backup quarterbacks historically in their second starts. Kellen Moore threw for 435 yards. Case Keenum threw for 350 yards. Guys like Austin Davis and TJ Yates and even Princeton's guy Mike Lennon all had really good second start performances. Uh, and of the six names I've mentioned here, they had, they, they had a 2-4 and four record, not great. But four threw for at least four, 300 yards and five threw for at least two touchdowns. So that tells me that even though this Colts defense is really good, Mike White might not have a terrible showing out there. He may come out and play relatively well. I don't think we'll see the numbers that we saw last week. I think he was named AFC Offensive Player of the Week, and understandably so. But he's not going to be a, He's going to lay over for the Colts either to, to enhance their playoff chances in Indianapolis. And, and I would imagine, other than Colts fans and the Colts themselves, Maybe secretly, deep down in his heart, uh, Zach Wilson's probably like, hey, man, just throw a few interceptions. I'm going to come back. I don't want there to be a, contra- contra- a quarterback controversy when I get there. Uh, and if the Jets happen to win, that's fine. But don't play too well. The, uh, the thing about the Jets in, in the situation of Mike White is that when you look at the way that he won against the Bengals, Either one, either two passes, attempted two passes more than 15 yards down the field. Uh, one was a, a, only one above 20, and that was actually a touchdown. But, uh, I mean, it, this depth of target is, like, is minuscule. I mean, he was dinking and dunking. The Bengals were giving it to him. It was a pretty bad defensive performance by Cincinnati. I sort of wonder what Matt Eberflus will, Eberflus will do here. The Colts actually, uh, as pointed out by Tyler Sullivan on tomorrow's Pick 6 podcast where we preview the game from a gambling perspective, check it out in all your perspective feeds, uh, pointed out that via our research team, the Colts give up the highest percentage of passes in that short yardage range, 0-5 to five air yards, but they know that the Jets are going to have to try to do that. So I would anticipate that they walk the safety down, pile the linebackers in there, try to rush four and just, you know, cover that area near and near and close to the line of scrimmage and dare Mike White to beat them down the field. I don't think he'll be able to do it, not with the weapons that the Jets have and their poorest offensive line. So that's sort of the concern if you're thinking about backing the Jets in this spot. All right, so let's take a look at the game itself. Uh, Akeem just detailed the huge Mike White debut in that upset of the Bengals. New York is getting 10 and a half with a total of 45 and a hook. Will, what's the smart way to play this game? <laughs> uh, go watch, go watch something else, or like go celebrate the uh, the Braves World Series. You know what I'm saying? Uh, look, the, uh, the I, I I'm gonna take the Jets here. I, I don't really feel good about it. It's ten and a half points. That's a lot of points. We have seen tons of these big favorites covering home road. Doesn't really seem to matter uh, when you go up when you get a good team or a quality team or maybe even just an average or above average team like the Colts, and they go up against a really really bad team. It feels like there's a bigger separation in the NFL this year. Uh, the the concern here is that the Colts could get a lead uh, like they did against the Titans and just feed Jonathan Taylor and to an extent Marlon Mack who might have some sneaky prop opportunities there and and the Jets just won't be able to come back but Colt Stevens is bad enough I do think Mike White and the Jets have an opportunity to come through the back door here they've been a lot more frisky as we point out at home than on the road but I'm going to take the double digits and I'm, I'm going to be petrified about it also Ryan Wilson's going rotten we can see him we can see him turning rotten like a pumpkin sitting out in your uh, on your front porch you can tell there's picks are starting to crash down middle of the season's coming i'm going to take one with fade wilson uh yeah worth noting brinson has had uh one more game that he lost against the spread <laughs> one week this is week nine will keep up so he's going with the jets and, and to be fair will has been really good on these thursday night games the last three weeks in terms of covering the spread i have been zero and three so maybe he's on to something that said i like the titans uh, at minus ten and a half and yes that's a huge number but as brinson noted uh teams have been getting blown getting their doors blown off and when you look uh at three of the five losses that the jets have they've come by at least 19 points and the teams of the Col- the colts have, have beaten miami houston and san francisco all by at least 10 points 28 points over houston so they're beating the bad teams. The Colts' losses have come to Seattle, the Rams, Tennessee twice, and the Ravens. So they're they're struggling against good teams, keeping some of those games close. But when they play bad teams, they really whip up on them. Yes, last week was an exciting win for the Jets. Maybe it says more about the Bengals than New York, or maybe per- perhaps Zach Wilson. I like the ten and a half. Uh, I like the Colts to exceed that number. It'll probably be close because we can expect a Carson uh, Wentz crazy interception at some point. But I think Brinson's also right. If they get up early, we could see a lot of Jonathan Taylor and sort of take the, the win out of the sales for what we saw from Mike White a week ago. All right, so Ryan's back in the Colts and uh, Will's back in the Jets. He says, give me the points. All right, let's target the prop market, your tippy-top prop for Thursday night. 
Ryan, I've got Jonathan Taylor on my fantasy team. That's really all that I care about in this segment. Is there a prop that you like that involves <laughs> Taylor, or is there another player that stands out to you? Uh, I love the Jonathan Taylor over 30, uh, 83 and a half. Uh, rushing yards, and that Jets defense is not very good. They're not very good against the run. That entire football team isn't very good. That's been obscured by the fact that they, they beat the, uh, a really good Bengals team last week. And I think, as we sort of alluded to here, uh, the Colts get up early. They can lean on the running game. Perhaps Naheem Hines and Marlon Mack get some of those carries, but typically they start off with Jonathan Taylor carrying the rock, and I think he'll do that early with some success. The only issue with Jonathan Taylor is sometimes he struggles to hold him to the football. If he does that, he'll continue to get fed, and I think he hits that number. He's done it, gone north of 100 yards three times this season, and I expect him to get north of 83-and-a-half against the Jets on Thursday night. You know what my favorite prop like available out there is on uh, on Caesars because we, again we mentioned we were doing the gambling podcast with Sully and and we were looking at first touchdown scores. Uh, someone named Ashton Doolin is eighteen to one to be the first touchdown scorer. I mean, I'm not saying I had to Google Ashton Doolin and that he's a uh, you know a, a football player in the, a, an American football player in the National Football League for the Indianapolis Colts. I'm just saying. Uh, at any rate, I've got the over on Michael Carter receiving yards if you look at what the Jets did last week again dink and dunk stuff from uh, Mr. White there he likes to get it in the short yardage 14 targets for Carter the explosive running back out of Carolina he is the uh, he's the preferred target in that short yardage area he's going to cruise past 35 and a half this should really be in the 40s and if for some reason you think the Jets are going to win this game and they're going to have a lead they won't be throwing to their running back as they try to catch up with the Colts uh, you can always go total yardage over I think Carter has a big game in the spot. Will, congratulations on the Braves winning the World Series. Big time. Hey, for all things NFL, check out the Pick 6 podcast. Join Will Brinson and his super friends Ryan Wilson and John Breach delivering your daily fix of NFL news and analysis. Get you up to speed so you're always in the know. The Pick 6 podcast. Download and subscribe today. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.